here this year. And we're live. We're live. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to um, this week's Coffee Key. I know we took a week off. I'm um, celebrating our achievers last week. Um, got lots of new faces, and some of you probably recognize them pretty well. I think along all different social media sites. We have lots of exciting campaign things going on in various markets. So, um, three new set of faces. Shall we introduce <laughs> yourself first? My name is Karen Enriquez. I'm an Epic Specialist. I um, have 10 years in background in recruiting, um, and I'm happy to be a part of the team. I'm Sheldon oh, Peters. <laughs> I have six months in recruiting background, but I'm also happy to be a part of the team. I'm Madison <laughs> Madison Gill. I'm a so lens dry. specialist. Hey, Madison. I've yeah. about six months in recruiting, and I'm also very happy to be a part of the team. Okay. Can we come up with something that's more original, please? Yeah, let's Karen try. Yeah. It's my fault. We should have brought the French fries. <laughs> but anyway. How, what, where did the French fries idea come from? Because everybody picked into my French fries yesterday. It's Friday. And now yeah, it's Friday. It's, I posted it. I posted something this morning that said Happy Friday, <laughs> and it had fries instead of FRI. I'm corny. And yeah. somehow gone viral. So now yeah. gone viral. <laughs> yeah. happy, so happy Friday. Friday. Yay. <laughs> So obviously we went with a couple different sessions. I think most of us have gone through second, third, fourth, fifth week, I think into the entire process. And then uh, we're going through a lot of area in terms of um, talking about specific information gathering. And before we get there first, um, tell us a little bit about your market. I'll probably have you two start first talking about, about your market specifically. Okay. Um, the Epic market is uh, based around an EMR called Epic, obviously and hospitals, clinics, and um, all types of healthcare, healthcare um, facilities use it to organize data, do everything really, do everything that's involved in the whole process of when a patient checks in to when they check out. Um, that's pretty much what we do. Sums up pretty well. That's what we totally specialize in our team. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What about yours? My market is LIMS, which is Laboratory Information Management Systems. There are many types of LIMS. You have Labware, LabVantage, Thermo Fisher, you have Watson LIMS, and they all have different versions as well. So there is a lot to learn with LIMS. LIMS is basically any laboratory that's what they use to manage their information. Okay. Good, good. So as we're going through this process, learning more about your market, gaining more knowledge, so I'll walk through a few things about what you're looking for specifically. So why why do we need to gather information? To be a subject matter in our uh, industry. Why is that important? It's important for the clients to recruit for and to understand the trends. Understand the trends, mm -hmm. um, talking to what, your clients. Yes, yes. Okay. Anybody else? Um, gathering information is important. Uh, Karen spoke about clients. It's important for us to build relationships with candidates as well. We can't start clients if we don't know any candidates. So gathering information is a great way to find more candidates and find out exactly what a candidate can do and how they may be able to fit with a client. Understanding the basic goes both ways, basically mm -hmm. between clients and candidates. What else? I, it's important, like, Sheldon just said it's important on the client and candidate side because you have to understand the position you're looking for. So it's important to understand what the what everyone in our markets actually does. Are they an engineer? Are they a consultant? So it's really important to get a full understanding of exactly what everyone in our market does and what our clients are looking for. It's kind of funny, but we used to think about what's going on in IT, right? We've heard about things, what's going on with the healthcare. Mm -hmm. But no, in doing the niche system specific, having that focus, now you're looking at something even more specific. So out of your own experience, what have you learned so far? That was a little bit from what you thought you were getting yourself into. You learn about the different modules, um, the NVTs, <laughs> new version training, um, and the whole, you know, by talking to candidates, you learn a little bit more in depth about what they do. So you learn every day from different um, analyst role to um, you know trainer role, and just learning more and getting more depth into the implementation process. Um, to piggyback off Karen, being niche allows me to become um, much more educated on what I'm working on. Instead of working on 
five roles from five different industries, I'm able to really focus in on one mm -hmm. and learn about that and be able to serve again both the client and the candidate because I know what I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I really like that about the niche market. IT is not just IT anymore. Right. It's not just healthcare IT mm -hmm. anymore. It's about actually specific within your niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. There is a lot more about limbs than I thought there would be, and limbs is basically a part of everything. Like. Any laboratory, they have to use it. Um, so it's it's really broad. It's not only in clinical trials. It's in pretty much everywhere, even in, like I said, the food and drug. That with the regulation specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Anything can be regulated by Food and Drug Administration, yeah. and that can be from pharmaceutical companies, medical device, to beverage companies, mm -hmm. food and beverage, and then with food science, food services, many different sectors and so on. So uh, is, how important is it for you to become an expert? Um, I think that means everything. It, it's, um, that's how you gain your credibility, and a client and candidate isn't gonna talk, gonna wanna talk to somebody who isn't at that or near that expert level because there are people out here that do have that understanding. And if you don't know what you're talking about, why would I spend my money with you? Or why would I trust my career search or job search in your hands? So I think that's really very essential. Yeah, because if you don't understand the client and their needs in that market, then how are you going to help them? You don't know what questions to ask um, and be able to get more in-depth, to get more detailed information. And then on the clients, I mean, the candidate side, um, if you don't know what you're talking about, and how they feel confident that you're going to be able to find them, you know, a great place. That's, the, a great credibility, project. That's right? the credibility. That's the credibility. Credibility is everything. Yep. It's, it's a hard because I, I like to pinpoint you out being the youngest one in the office, actually. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily mean the age portion of things, but looking at, you know, a lot of times we be, we're being challenged by people mm -hmm. that, do you know what you're talking about? What oh, are you yeah. talking about? It is hard because it's so important to become a subject matter expert because even I feel like sometimes people will always question and they always ask, do you really know what you're talking about? And then you can come back and kind of save the conversation when you do know what you're talking about. So you can tell them information and then they think, oh, maybe this person does know what they're talking about. So it's important to know things, to talk to them about to, for that credibility to find that out what that's like essentially. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know it now, obviously that there's always more things to learn. We're never gonna know exactly how to build right. or how to design, mm -hmm. how to implement. But the thing is these are people we've talked to all day long. Because we're not the hands-on person doing it, but we know what's going in the market. Mm -hmm. So at what point do you consider yourself an expert? Hmm. That's a hard one. I think there's always more things to learn. Because like you said with limbs, it's even in food and beverage, so, and I, I had no idea of that until recently. So I, I think there's always something to learn. Good, I like that. So, so I'm not sure when like you that. cross that expert line. Well, um, from a recruiting standpoint, of course, we're not going to be the expert that can go, like Ken said, go build or go train. But Just I think stole my words. <laughs> right, copy that. But I think. Um, <laughs> For us, being an expert is being able to speak confidently about um, what it is a candidate may do in their job title. So That's a good angle, when you can speak about it confidently. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I get a... Um, a job spec for a trainer, I should be able to completely understand what I'm looking for and be able to tell if a candidate will fit that role or wouldn't fit that role. Um, same with the client, I should be able to understand what that job entails and be able to make a decision on what type of person would fit that role with confidence, like we said. Yeah, I totally agree with that. What else? What are the indicators when you know you're an, you're, you're an, you're an expert or becoming an expert? Everybody loves you're it. You're learning. You're learning more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that was aspirin making. I think when you start to know in your market, when certain com when you know certain companies are starting to implement a certain version of something, when you know those things are coming up, like oh, I know this company is about to implement mm -hmm. Thermo Fisher or Watson Limbs. I think when you start to really have that market knowledge of all the companies and what they're doing.
good. Obviously, that will help you gain again the credibility too mm-hmm. by you knowing what's going on. Mm-hmm. You too, I should pick you on a really good point specifically about the people, right? When people love you. Yeah. Well, I, I think that in my career, I have I have a awakening <laughs> at some point is when people start coming to me, looking for an opp- opportunity or looking for a job or coming to me, asking me about what should I do with my resume. Right. I think when somehow the focus, the direction starts shifting the other way around right. versus me going out and get to get business or me going out to find candidates when they are coming to me, I think that's a that's a good sign yeah. mm-hmm. about yeah. that you're okay. now being known as an expert. Right. Yeah, when candidates are coming, I'm finding that a lot. People are coming to me more than me trying to you know, reach out to them. So I'm getting a lot of reach out. Reach right. out. Reach out to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the way of being yeah. recognized uh, yeah. is that, you know, epic, for example. <laughs> Limbs, for example, people coming out recognize you. Oh, it's Karen. Oh, it's Sheldon. Oh, right. yeah, it's Madison, so on and so forth. Okay, good, good. So, um, let's talk a little, about a little bit more um, about how to do information gathering specifically. So, when we talk about information gathering first, what are the things that cross your mind first? Well, um, what system are you using? What system do you use? What version of that system do you use? We're in healthcare IT, so that's what we, we talk about systems. So. That's the first thing that I really kind of want to find out is the technical side of things. Yeah, mm-hmm. the technical the skills, right? Okay. What else about information gathering? And when talking to candidates, you get referrals. I'm from mm-hmm. business development. Who do you know? Yeah, who do you know? Who do you know? Do you know any other projects that are coming up in other facilities? Just good people hang out with good mm-hmm. people. Yep. And they tend to gather together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good. What else? I think what they said the candidate. Talking to our candidates is really important because you learn what version they're using and what specific modules, and that's really important. And you start to learn everyone because the markets are so niche and so small. There's not a ton of people, so you start to come re come across names like, oh, I talked to this person last week. They're a limbs admin. So I think that's really important. Okay. I think. Um, even more after technical, now I gotta get to know the person. I gotta get to know what your buttons are, what you like, what you're looking for, what you're not looking for, maybe where you'll go, where you don't wanna travel. So mm-hmm. and outside of what you can do at work, what what are your motivators? Why is that important? That's important because you wanna you wanna place candidates in the right ideal opportunity for them. So it's important to know where they live and if they will or won't move, who will be involved in the move? Did the, is it just them or do they have a family? Because all those are things to take into consideration when finding them their next opportunity. So it's about the people aspect of things, right? Mm-hmm. About getting to know the people. Yeah. And what are some of the key elements in that about getting to know the people? You build a relationship with them. Okay. That's the main right. thing. Relationship you don't want them to age. think that they're just there. You want to actually build a genuine relationship with them. That's having, always fun. Yeah, no. About having that genuine interest yeah. in the people that you talk to. Because yeah. 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 if they don't feel like we care, I mean... Right, I can call see. somebody else. Yep. Yeah. Do the same mm-hmm. thing. It's funny, but most of you that came from a recruitment background, I know some of you have done some business development or sales in, in, the, in, in the past. How has this full 360 experience been? For you so far, <laughs> very busy. <laughs> very busy is the word. Talk, very busy. Talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Well, Karen says busy. For me, it's um. I feel like it's a situation where, for some, it might be a little, a little more pressure. But for me, it gives me the opportunity to control my destiny. Mm-hmm. I am not waiting on somebody to bring me a job order or a job spec. I have to go out and get it. And once I go get that job spec, I have to go find the candidates for it. So um, I think that for me, that's a positive because if I want to come in and go to work today, then I will see the fruits of my labor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done a little bit of both of business development and recruiting, um, but not like this full 360. But, um, but it's actually, you're being able to research the client I'm getting to know them and then knowing, I mean, even reverse, looking at resumes and matching them up to, you know, your target company. But I do love the 360 approach, yeah. It makes it easier to... Yeah, you're controlling really everything. You don't have to depend on someone else going, oh, right. well, what's coming next? Or, right. you know, you can just co- control and gauge it. So. And my understanding of the job is a lot yeah. better mm-hmm. because I'm the one that talked to the client and got it, so... That's funny. You yeah, you, are, you have the relationship on both sides that are strong, so... Mm-hmm. 
we should think more di- directional. Mm-hmm. So it's funny we talk about it in reverse, but now it's actually all connected yeah. together. Yes, right. it's all right. yes, like yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. So talk about. I think it's a lot more work, but it's worth it because, like they said, it's so much more control because you don't have to wait on someone to get you feedback. You know, everything is in your control. Everything is in your hands. So you really do have that ability to make things happen. And also look after in the entire process. Mm-hmm. I think that one of them over there today learned a valuable lesson within the past 24 hours. But usually it's the one that we don't know, we don't find out. How the one that come back and bit us from behind, and then the, that's how somehow how placements fell through, or things that you think is gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna be great. We we'll have a great relationship. It comes out, not quite. So talk a little bit more about now about information gathering. Now, how do you go out and get information? What are you looking for? Let's start with first. What are you looking for specifically? I'm looking for a clean doc. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking for a clean doc c- <laughs> certified store in full time <laughs> California. <laughs> Tapestry right Tapestry. here. Come on. Right. Tristan. Our fearless leader. Our Tristan. fearless oh. leader. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll do a walk by. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, have obviously been instructed. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so what information are you trying to gather? Throughout um, your calls, throughout your relationship building, throughout the conversation that you've had. Well, I'll be the cliche woman throughout the Go for it. what, when, where. Yeah. Um when how and the why. The five you know, W and one H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The that's the that's the cliche, but it really is important because that allows us to hit every aspect possible of the whole full three sixty um full desk. So um <laughs> Yeah, that's like a synopsis of what we're looking for. We could speak for two hours about. Yeah, we can go on and on about that. Oh, go for it. <laughs> oh my God. So, what Let's a synopsis. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Karen. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Look. All right. So if I'm looking for a client, well, I'm going to do this one. Yeah. I um, come across a good resume, or somebody reaches out to me. They send me the resume. It looks really good. I talk to them. I gather information from that candidate about their experience. Uh, their uh, their certifications, uh, their MBTs, um, what they uh, specialize in, what their strengths are for that role. Um, find out about their salary, um, what they're looking for, either it's contract and full time. Salaries are different for that. Um, bonuses, perks. Um, you know, ask about their per- you know personal information. Like one guy today, which I can't say, but he's. He's going to propose to his fiance. Oh, you know, wow. Um, I hope so, they're not watching. Um, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, so, I'm more curious about how, he's get, how it's going to happen at the end. And he told me how he's going to do it, but I'm not oh, going to say yeah. it now because I'm not. <laughs> That's exciting. I'm well, like, whoever you are, thank you for watching it. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he you know, found out that he'd want his future fiance to travel with him. Um, but she's not working, but they want to stay grounded there. So, you know, you get that information so you know what that, uh, that candidate wants. He goes, well, I don't want to go to California, but and I told him I want to get this information because I want to place him where he's going to be happy, not where I want him to go. Um, then you also, um, you know, get what they want to do, what are their long-term goals. So, hey, you've got a great opportunity. And the long-term goal, you can turn into management with this position. Right. So you find out information like that. Right. What resume says, you're a perfect, picture perfect, or resume perfect yeah. candidate. Doesn't ask always about, mean that's yeah. right. Ask right. about right. their weaknesses, how they overcome them. Uh, one candidate that I'm sitting on an interview Monday, he brought out, he told me his weaknesses without me having to ask. And then he told me how he answered his weaknesses. Um, right. How he fixed his weaknesses or working on them or whatever. It sounds like there's a relationship already built there mm-hmm. to yeah. start with. Yeah. Just yeah. From, from nothing to something. Yeah. I think a, a good point in gathering the information mm-hmm. in um, the four W's and the H is to not be afraid to ask anything. Mm-hmm. Five, Five W's and H. <laughs> Which W got missed? Not being able to, um, not being afraid to ask anything and really probing and finding out what those buttons are, um, finding out what they make and what they really want to make, finding out where they don't want to go because, mm-hmm. like Ken said, sometimes those are the things that come back and bite you later so you really got to get 
to the bottom of everything and find those little trigger points. So that's an important. That's something I think is important about that also. Yeah. So you know how to manage that whole process without obviously something important to you, Mr. Client or Mrs. Candidate. We want to make sure that we do the, the right thing that makes some sense. Obviously, that I have a full profit business to run <laughs> for myself. <laughs> it has to make sense in all parties. But it, it knowing that information is extremely important mm -hmm. for us to move forward. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Like Sheldon and Karen said, it's just it's really important to know all the details. Like uh, one of my candidates, I initially. I just asked him if relocation would be okay. And then I had to go back and find out, okay, like I said earlier, is it just you relocating or do you have a whole family you have to relocate? It turns out he has a whole family he has to relocate, but one of his kids is in kindergarten, I believe, and the other is in fifth grade, so it's not really a big deal to relocate since she'll be going into middle school next year anyways. So it's not like they're in the middle of high school or anything like that. They may or may not have the flexibility. I think I've dealt with people that have special needs. Mm -hmm. So it turned out that having that local resources was important for them. Mm -hmm. And then I work with candidates with um, ill elderly parents or relatives or so on. Some of them actually have was their other half. So we want to make sure obviously we play those in sectors on gathering information. But now that's generally more on the business sense side of things mm -hmm. about knowing the companies, the clients, the candidates. How do you go about gathering those information? Why are those important? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, that's a good LinkedIn. But um, one. <laughs> oh, LinkedIn. Ah, LinkedIn. The Bible. The well, Bible. Um, the new Facebook. One one way that um that we can gather information about clients and companies specifically is just listening when candidates talk. If a candidate says that. I was just let go of hospital. A, let go from hospital A. Uh, bingo, hospital A probably has an opening for that role. So, um, just really being savvy about gathering information and listening to what you should listen to. Um, that's that's yeah, that's all I got. Understanding a little bit more about the company. Researching the candidate. company website, looking at the careers page, um, seeing what positions they have open. Right. Um, finding out who to reach out to. Um, you know, you can go on LinkedIn, of course, and we'll keep saying LinkedIn. Right. But researching, you know, um, and then by references from the candidates as well, find out who they're who they reported to, and then go right. through that, you know, okay. avenue. And then when you talk to the hiring manager, you can learn more about the role, specific needs, and things like that. I have a thought. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, not really. Except for I think we get a lot of our information from the candidates because. They tell us where they worked, what they did. It's like, okay, what kind of blimps did you use at this hospital? And then you know the companies, and you do know what kind of system they're using. Mm -hmm. It's funny that because a lot of people think that salespeople are always a little bit snaky, mm -hmm. a little bit more um, shady. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you're just always probing information from me. I think I works on both candidates and client side of things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think most of us have been in that situation to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And then how do you now on the on the uh, being on the driver's side of the conversational person? You're driving your conversation, right? Mm -hmm. How how do you? What kind of approach, or if I say, what kind of application do you need to do? Do you need to use in order to have an effective conversation um, with information gathering, knowing that that's partially your purpose now? I think that you actually have to care. You can't just be sitting there with questions lined up that you want to get answered. You actually have to be genuinely interested. And people can tell when you're interested in them and it shows through and people are more willing to talk to you when you are. It's not always about. To be honest, right. when you say that, right. they say that you're trying, you know, you like to network and you like to help other candidates. So I have other analysts that are ready to start a project. You mind helping me, you know, a little bit. Um, if you know of anybody that you can refer me to that I could talk to about placing these other candidates as well. So exactly. that's what I do. Is all I do is epic. Mm -hmm. I network that way. So mm -hmm. and everybody's willing to help if you ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, the help me help you thing is really important. Hey, Jerry Maguire. Help me, yeah. help, me. <laughs> yeah, help, me oh, help you. Were you so, even born before that movie was? I know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's really important, like gathering the information so I can help you find your next opportunity, if not now, in the near future. 
yeah having that very much of a value centric Mm -hmm. um, converse based as conversation extremely important and what value value obviously bring it on the, to the table mm -hmm. I think that's an easier one that you just kind of gave it to everybody that will because all I do is epic mm -hmm. and then I obviously contribute a whole lot With of purpose behind breathing. it breathing <laughs> cool. epic so last but not least tell us a little about your personal brand about who you are about what you're focusing on I'm sorry. I am an epic specialist, like we've established, and I live, eat, and breathe like Karen. Epic. Um, what I want to do is really build relationships with both sides, candidates and clients. I want to get to know everybody. I want to get to know what they do, what they feel about the system, what downfalls they feel like the system might have. Um, I just want everyone to, to know me. I want to be known as the guy that is genuinely interested and really cares about epic and epic people. <laughs> so that's Sheldon in a nutshell. That's Sheldon. Please vote Sheldon. for it, Sheldon. Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All your dreams will come true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I'm the Napoleon Dynamite voice. <laughs> My brand, I want to build, um, you know, like Sheldon, uh, build relationships. Um, be, you know, showing information, um, showing information, um, posting jobs, and posting my star candidates on LinkedIn because I want to be the go-to person. And, oh, that's Karen. She's, and I want to build my brand that way. Um, I just want to be known as a go-to person for Epic, um, both candidates and clients. So, yeah. And then the French fry post as well. Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Friday. That's Happy gonna Friday. be your campaign now. Right, right, right. I know my own every Friday it's gonna be the McDonald's. <laughs> I'm a limb specialist and what I wanna do is like Karen and Sheldon said, I wanna focus on the candidate side and the client side and really get to know everyone in the market since it is such a small market. It's like if I'm not working with you now, I wanna be working with you in the future. Fantastic. Well these Fantastic folks, awesome people. Um, if you want to um, put in your comments for us, feedback for us, how they did today, including myself, please comment below um, under either your watching from Facebook or YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then our number is 617-291-0081. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Give us go. a shout on all the options on specific Epic and Limbs with these folks. One final plug, certified ClinDoc store analyst, <laughs> I mean trainer, trainer, in California. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.